orange into it. And we're going to find it, even though I don't, I almost don't see it, but I'm going to find it as it goes behind these trees and it comes out in here. And it's really, it's everything there. This is one thing a camera does sometimes. And this photo is a photo that I had blown up from a photo. It's not, in other words, I had a small little photo of it. Uh, I do not have the negatives anymore. That's ever since digital came in. So some of these old photos, I literally have got to go and just have them blown up and take it as it comes, you know? Okay, so you're wondering why here? That's because there's more trees. There's more trees like right here, here, comes down here, almost right up and then we got two trees in there. All right, that's my drawing. Now, if I don't want my paint to mix in with that paint, what I might do is take my knife and scrape some of that pigment off just so I don't have to fight as much pigment. Still there. It's just not as thick because I started pretty thick. So now I can go back to that this tree color, which is a combination of uh, sap green, a little bit of uh, white and uh, burnt umber. You don't want those greens to be too green. So what we're going to do is this. And you see how I'm contaminating as I mix into that edge? I like the I like it what's happening there, but I am picking up that paint underneath. And so every time I do it, I have to go back and pick up fresh paint. Now I'm going to go up and get this tree top as it overlaps. I, I'm making it overlap. It didn't overlap. I, I'm making it for design sake. Overlapping is one of the great things we can do to help create the illusion of space. We've got color, we've got value, we've got scale, and we've got overlapping. Those are your keys in creating distance. So if you can make something overlap as opposed to just become kind of tangent on the edge, you're actually better off. You want to stay with a big brush, kind of get it in there. And if you intermix, I'm, I'm constantly re remixing the color. If I get the wrong color, I don't care because nature is not one clean flat color. Keep that in mind. Therefore, don't try to always make it. Otherwise, it looks like it looks like a poster that you've kind of done with poster paint. It's like, you know, it's very posterized. So we're getting this mass of trees, which is pretty dark. It's not as dark as I can go, but it's pretty dark. We get a couple little in here, and then these, and I see a lot more warmth in those two end trees. So I actually threw a little bit of burnt sienna into the same color, and we'll paint one. I'm actually fussing too much. And two, one, and then we'll just, the light is what's gonna give the characteristic to that. And it's those two trees right there, the mass, the tree down below, and then we gotta keep moving. There is a mass right behind it, very similar in color, by the way, very similar. So we're gonna kind of take this mass and work it in. And there's some trees that come up here, which have to overlap. Now I'm intermixing these colors, so I am actually lightening this color as I go. So you, the paint that you already have down mixes sometimes and helps you create the new color that you're after. It's not like you have to constantly remix, remix, remix. So we're getting these layers in here and some trees. And for the trees, it's just a matter of edge control. It's the way you use your brush and create the feeling of that edge. There's that mesa. There's this whole mass right about in there. I've got it just about right. And then there's some darks. There. Just busyness. Activity, I like to call it. So it isn't just a flat tone. OK. Let's keep moving. We're going to come up, we're going to lighten it a little bit because this, this ground plane, there's another mass of trees, uh, bushes there, which have a lot more warmth in them. They're right about in here. All right. But prior to that, I'm going to go back to my big brush. I'm going to clean it a little bit because I've got a lot of this blue green. I've got this color in here. So I'm just going to scrape and pull as much paint as I can out of it. Do a little bit of 
turp cleaning a one more pull and dry it out a little bit. And now we're ready to kind of move on with this kind of ochre color. So what am I starting with? I just used the word ochre. I'm going to start with ochre, keep it off to the right, and I'm going to bring a little umber into it. And that's going to make it quite warm, probably a little too warm. So I'm going to counter that with just a touch of blue so it stays warm. And let's see, we still want it in shadow. That's, eh, maybe I could go a little darker. A little bit, not much. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, let's leave it. I'm just hoping I'm right. Close enough. It's like painting plain air. You paint plain air, you get it in there. You don't have time to adjust, adjust, adjust. You have to basically do it and you know, the more you do it, the more familiar you become and the better you get at the judgment call in the beginning. A little bit of warmth. So I took a little orange through that into that color. Just touching that brush down. Kind of the way I see it. Anything I can add to it, great. Just, just laying things down. So the feeling to me is beginning to work. And that's all, that's all I hope for in the beginning. I want it to begin to work. The less correction I have to deal with later, the better, particularly in a quick painting. In a long painting, if you're painting in your studio and you know you're gonna be painting for next, be wrong. You can you can go back the next day and fix it. You can reevaluate it the third day, fourth day. Keep reevaluating. But when you're doing a quick one, and you're just trying to uh, be as accurate as you can, it's these quick paintings. This is like like I call I call them giant studies. Uh, these quick paintings are just super for practicing for plain air. You guys just you know I I, I can't state it enough. It really is wonderful for for practicing plain air stuff because it's literally, you're making decisions kind of almost like I'm doing. Maybe you have a little bit longer, but not a lot. A lot of times you'll paint smaller too. So that can be an asset. Um, I shouldn't say a lot of times, most of the times, most people I know paint smaller. And that's, that's a personal thing. I do know a couple of guys that paint really large. It's, I just stay with this brush as long as I can. This giant, this is this wonderful giant rosemary um, number 12. And I've used the, you guys have watched me work with the gesso brush, which I do sometimes. Uh, it's just a feeling. I just decided I was going to do this today. I wish I could tell you why I make some of these decisions. Unfortunately, um, it's a gut level instinct that, that at, as I begin, I just always try and stay with a large brush in the beginning. That is the one consistent thing that I do, literally. Try and stay with that damn large brush. Now we want to come in with this mass, right? And that's going to sit kind of in here. And I actually added too much blue into it, I think. So I'm going to bring a little bit more umber back into that. So Jess Valori had a question. Hi, Jess. Um, hey, Jess. That uh, what she wants to know, like when you started teaching, were you always this good at narrating your process? And um, since, since I studied with Craig, uh, over 30 years ago, I can say, yes, he was. He always explained everything so well. And um, that's what it makes it easy to follow him, not so easy to imitate, but. That's good to know. I I that answer. I, I, I've always talked, um, whether I've done good narration or not, just, and I talk out of maybe nervousness. I talk because I don't like it quiet. I feel like if, it's quiet. People are saying weird things about me. So, if I um, if if I talk, people will probably shut up and listen, and won't uh, make disparaging comments. I mean, I remember I've watched people paint. And I go, wow, what are I doing that? That's that's weird. And so I, I assume people are saying the same kind of thing when I paint. Uh, so what I'm trying to do, truthfully, is answer those questions that might be in your head. And if I'm not, then it's on you. You need to ask. <laughs> so this paint's thin right here. So I'm getting that red coming through. But I see it 
cooling off in here. I see an interesting variation. I've just got to get the busyness of the striations in there. And right or wrong, they're going to sit. Now I'm going to try and pick up that little part. This little part I've got, it's going to be right back kind of in that realm right there. And then it's got a little pull down here. And then this part comes out. And this is going to be the back side of that water. And then we've got a shadow creeping in. I kind of like that design. It's just a nice design. I don't like the shape of it. I got to give it a more erratic edge uh, so it feels like foliage. But I kind of like that piece of shadow sneaking in there. All right, let's keep moving with some of these darks. Uh, it stays darker over in this realm anyway. So I'm going to just kind of do some scrubbing. Go back with that umber, mix it in with the green, add a touch of blue. Same thing that I was just doing. And we're going to start, let's see, I'll start right here. Oh, I'm going to go warmer, warmer and a little darker. Just really pretty simple. All I did is add burnt umber. I'm going to add a little, I don't think it's warm enough. So I added a little lizard and crimson. Now we'll kind of bring this up here and about to here and then it comes over. All right. And then we get a little part of this tributary kind of coming up, disappearing. And then we, oh, this is pretty thick. Once again, more umber. What happens is, is a lot of the uh, residual color that I had on the brush is kind of coming forward. So here we go there. Can you talk about the surface? Talk about what? The surface. What size? This surface? Yeah, what it is on your own board. It's, oh, I, I, I'm sorry, I thought I said it at the beginning. It's a piece of hard board. It's very thin, um, gessoed, and then gessoed with a little blue and a little um, brown and white mixed in, and then let it dry. And then I came in this morning with a little, I took some red and some ochre and just kind of smeared it all over to the place with a lot of water, let it dry, because I wanted a warm tone. That was my reasoning. My reasoning was I wanted a warm tone. I wish I could say, it's a warm, I want a warm tone because of it, give you some sort of incredible conceptual line. But truthfully, I just felt like I wanted to. And what size is it? It's 24 by 30. It's a little bit big. I feel sometimes a little bit more free when I work large. And, you know, I will, I will start free and then hopefully, as I've mentioned many, many times, pull it together at the end. So let's cross our fingers and hope I get able to pull it together at the end. Sometimes I pull it together better than other times. And you've been witness to that. It's just that I'm not telling you which, which one I think is, is working better than other ones. A lot of it is just, um, some of it's luck. Some of it is just, you know, I, I'll tell you an interesting story. When I was teaching years ago, and I was illustrating and teaching. Um, let's get some, some stuff in here, just like, I was teaching art center. I remember coming to class after being up all night and not sleeping. I know students did that. I didn't help. I did it as a student too. But I remember doing it as an instructor and coming to class and having models up there because I always taught model, almost always taught model classes. Um, and sometimes I do some of the better paintings. And I kind of, I always wondered about that. I always wonder, you know, theoretically I'm beat. I'm, I'm, you know, not all there, so to speak, because I've been up all night. And I think sometimes it's, I, I relied more on trust and I went to autopilot and things kind of worked out. So I, I began to trust myself a little bit more. Uh, I think that's, I think that's not an uncommon occurrence. Um, and so it, it, that kind of got me into where I just, you know, I hate to say it, but you're sitting there in class and you're trying to demonstrate. And at some point after a period of time, it's like, I don't care. <laughs> it's terrible to say, but I don't care if it comes out really good. Hopefully it does, but if it doesn't, it doesn't. And that attitude was is very freeing where you're not, I, I mixed up a, a red, nah, it's not red enough. I, um, it's, it's very freeing to know that you can just cut loose 
and it'll probably come out okay. Um, Can you explain your choosing uh, underpainting color? What's your decision making? My underpainting, my underpainting color came from looking at this area. I saw a lot of warm and I said, I haven't done a warm underpainting. So it was twofold. It was influenced by the subject that I was painting, but it was also influenced by what I've done in the past in terms of demonstration for you guys. Um, I, I wanted it to be, I like to do things that I hopefully are fun and challenging for me because I want to learn, uh, but they're also informative for you guys. And so I'm looking at both sides and I'm not just looking at, at one or another. Now I've got a palette knife here because I think I can move the paint a little bit more effectively. Oh, I like that. It's, it's, I haven't intermixed it. Now I'm going to take more ochre into that color and a little bit more um, blue and white. And we're going to come down a little more yellow now that I see it. I just caught that. So let's try this right about, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this, and I'm saying right about here is where I want it. Right about there. Whoop, too much yellow. That's way too much. You see how bright that was? I may want to end up there, but I sure don't want to start out there. Okay. That's kind of a mess, but it's kind of a controlled mess. Which, it's a, that's an interesting phrase that I just used there because it's kind of what I like my paintings to be. Um, controlled mess. Yeah, I like there to be freedom and energy and then control. And that starts to have it. You notice I always say side bit. I'm always reluctant to say that's got it because I just don't know until I'm approaching completion. I, I, I think I've got it, but until I see how it all works together, I don't know. Okay, let's keep going. And Ben Benson was saying, I believe I could have enjoyed my years at Park Center if I hadn't had deadlines the very next morning. I had fun with the students even late into the evening, forgetting that I would be up the rest of the night. Yep. Can't tell you how many times, Ben. That's, that's the life of an illustrator. I, I, I think it probably still is. Not doing it anymore, I, I don't know. But I think it probably still is. Um, and I think I... I would have developed a much loose, although the demand at the time was where they wanted tight work, but I would have demanded a much looser, uh, I won't say demanded, I would have come up with a much freer, looser style, more like this, if <laughs> circumstances had been different. But because uh, I happen to do a lot of work with the film industry, they were much more interested in things being as real as you can make them. They said, look, we're in a realist. I heard this, uh, the direct, the head of Columbia Pictures, I think his name was Frank Price, uh, said, we're in a medium, a visual photographic medium. Therefore, anything artistically that has been done for us should follow that same, and everybody jumped on it. And so the more you could make it more real, the more people tend to like it. And so it, it stretched you as an artist because maybe that wasn't your inclination, but you wanted to be able to make a living. And so you went along with it. And I taught myself a lot. I mean, it, there's a good and a bad side to it. I learned a lot. That's the good side. The bad side is I didn't develop my particular voice in art or painting because the industry was, the, was uh, demanding a certain genre, a certain look. And it was great if you automatically fell into that. I kind of did, but not necessarily, because I've, I've always been a little bit more of an experimenter. Um, that's what I do with these, you guys. You get to see me experiment. Denise wants to know, um, do you prefer a limited palette for landscape and why? Do I prefer a limited palette? Generally, the answer is yes. Um, why? Just because it's easier to control. And that way, uh, a, a nice way to think about it is start with a, a very limited, and if you feel you need more, add color to your palette as you need it. Don't start with all the color. So 
it's kind of a nice way of, of kind of thinking about the way you use color, but it's, it's much easier to control a limited talent. You don't have as many choices. So your color relationships were, are more important in a limited palette than they are in a full palette. You can make a blue, you can make a bright blue, you can make, but in a limited palette, maybe you can't make a bright blue. So you have to make, how do you make a blue bright? All right, you make a blue bright by having its complement mirror, which is orange. That makes the blue bright. That makes, that'll make your blue feel brighter. So what you do, it's like I said, it's the relationship more than it is and that's would be uh, exactly the way it is with a limited color palette. It's about the relationships, not so much uh, the exactness of color. So I've got, I'm trying to keep a lot of medium in this paint. Um, I think I might be a little too bright here, but I want to start getting brighter right about in here. And I want this to extend over to here. So I'm using a lot more yellow. Now there's just, I just mix pure, I'm gonna have to bring a dark back into it, but I mix pure um, ochre into that color. And I'm gonna do it right here. And I'm looking right about in here, just see so if you guys are, keep you kind of informed as to the areas that I'm trying to portray. This area I just didn't get. I tried it, but I didn't get it. We'll get it later. Oh, I know I'm gonna need more real yellow, so hang on. Well, I will hunt down my real yellow. yellow. There it is. Okay. <laughs> real yellow and ochre. I know I'm going to need more ochre too. Just because those, there's so much of that. So now I've got real yellow and I've got ochre. Real yellow. <laughs> that's, a, that's a color you can buy at the store. You just ask for ask your uh, art store for real yellow. I'm joking. I have to be careful when I say yeah. things like that. People don't know that you're joking. I've had, I've had people write things down that I'm saying, and sometimes I'm just messing around a little bit. Um, so I have to watch that. I remember uh, when I was, one of my first classes I think I ever taught at Art Center. Um, you know, I, students said, can you leave us, it was the last day of class, the students said, can you leave us with some really nice words of wisdom? So I thought I was gonna be real clever. And I'm writing down the finish should be better than the beginning. All right, profound, huh? And I turned around, I wrote that on the blackboard. Turn around, people were writing it down. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, um, I better clarify that that was facetious. That was not, you know, me uh, making some sort of incredible statement about art. I mean, that's hopefully everybody understands that, that hopefully the beginning of your piece should not look better than the completion of your piece. So I know that I gotta be careful. And when I do say things, that's what happens when you're kind of a wise ass, I suppose. Kind of like it gets a little blue going in there. Love that blue, blue I got in there. Uh, haven't pushed the brighter yellows, but I kind of like the textures I'm getting. Okay, so now I'm gonna stand back for a second. I don't know what the hell that is. Let's get rid of it. Or that. Got that. We got another one about in here. Okay, let's start to, I'm gonna take real yellow or it's yellow Hansa is what I have. I don't have a cat. I do have a cat. I just had, didn't lay it out. Uh, I should have, um, there, right about here. Oh, I like, that's a good color. And what is that color? That's yellow Hansa along with whatever else I've already got in the brush. So I didn't mix a whole new, it's a lot of color variation. I can go nuts back here with just dealing with all the different color variations. Different types of yellows. And that's where, that's where uh, you can build. You build and you build and you build and you get all those wonderful color on color on color. 
Now, like here's some nice yellows. It's not weighing down. So what do you do? You add medium. Watch. Now it went down. All right. If it's not going down, it means your paint's not wet enough. Now, if you add turf, it thins it out too much. That's where your mediums come in handy. The mediums come in handy because you want, you still want density with to, to your paint, but at the same time, okay, now I'm gonna add ochre to it because I, I just see it and I've got a mixture kind of as it moves into this area, not even enough. I'm gonna add more orange and ochre now. Let's try it again. Okay, that's starting to work a little bit better. There, 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 there. Got to get this down quick. I haven't even looked at the time, huh? Well, we started a little late, so I'm going to probably go a little. Sorry, we had a, we had glitches every night. It's we were just talking about that when you guys weren't around. Uh, is sometimes it just we start these things off and they go beautifully right at the beginning, and sometimes we're going to start these these sessions off and we're having all kinds of problems. Who knows? I'm not a computer guy, so for me, it's just. Uh, it's a mystery that how this whole thing works anyway. Okay, I got some brown at the base of the brush. So by pushing down on my brush, by pushing down, I'm forcing this brown into that color. And therefore I can actually come in and without laying out, out a new color, I can mix the color that I want for this um, mesa, for the side of the mesa. Now the top of the mesa is just a tad lighter because of the way the sun is hitting. So but we want to get a little bit of that kind of dirt back in the brush because that gives us all these little striations um, that are happening on the surface, just like the dark one. Whoops, not, I thought I thought, interesting. I thought I had it. There we go. Oh, let's see. That feels okay. I'm I'm trying to keep moving. Um, I want to go back to the lighter yellow and bring that right in here. More medium, I can tell. I know I'm going to need more of that yellow too. Don't be darned. I'm just going through. I'm using pretty thick paint. I know you probably cannot tell, but the paint is actually pretty pretty thick. Now, it from time to time it gets a little hint of green. So. I grab that um, the yellow and the ochre, and then I grab just a touch of the um, radiant blue. And I can kind of come in and it gives, it gives a flavor to the yellow. I, I use that term a lot uh, just because I think you can stay with the same color too long and it can really become boring. I see it there, I see it there. We see a nice, yellow area up in here. I want to make sure. I got to step back for a second. How's it working? It's working all right. I'm not crazy about that right there, but um, that was just me kind of scouring it with my eyes very quickly. Uh, is that yellow again? I'm going through this yellow light. Yellow and the ochre is right here. So I'm squeezing out more paint. And I have quite a bit of paint out to begin with, just so you guys know. I, I'm usually not too stingy when it comes to laying paint out. Um, and it's, I, I know my paint's not gonna go to waste because I've, I've got two or three other things I'm working on on my own that I'll be working on later. So it's not like this paint is gonna um, be wasted. So here, lighter color right there, really bright. And I have, I have very varying mixtures of yellows already mixed up in here. Okay, move it all the way over here, looking right in here, just so in case you're wondering what the heck I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, I wanna go in and get that, and then it divides, we get a little bit of a, of a pull. No, that's right about there. I like the fact that the paint is mixing a little bit because I, I, I don't want it to be the same yellow that I lay down. Now, I can see right now that right here, I would be bringing in water. Reminder, helpful, um, helpful reminder. 
Tom wants to know if you could speak to yellows being tricky. Yellows, um, yellows are like greens. Constantly remix. Don't use the same yellow. Look for warms. Look for cools. Yellow, I, I is a neutral. And by a neutral, it's not. It it sits. It divides the warm side of the spectrum from the cool side of the spectrum. The warm side meaning the reds, cool side meaning the blue greens. All right. Uh, therefore. Yellow can go either way really easily. You can lean it towards the blue spectrum, which takes it into the greens. You can use it, you can lean it towards the warm spectrum, which takes it into the oranges. So you need to be able to look for the variations and create those variations. Uh, don't be afraid to, and if, if need be, even exaggerate those variations. Uh, you can always go back and repaint, but you just don't want to be a paint yellow as it's, it's the same. I could say exactly the same with greens because greens tend to be a problem in nature because um, people always want to paint greens too green. That's it. That's the easiest way to say that. They want to paint it really a nice, beautiful, you know, Kelly green. And we don't really see that many of that color in nature. Maybe if you're looking at a golf course, huh? Maybe if you're looking at a golf course, you see it. I don't paint golf courses. I thought about it, pretty subject matter. Uh, and it's a great way to put figures in, but I haven't done it. I've actually, I've painted a couple as kind of commissions. Um, and I have these stronger greens in those, by the way. Um, they're fun. It's kind of, a, it's, a, it's a different kind of a challenge. Steve wants to know, are you once again recommending real yellow? Real yellow. <laughs> this is a tube of real yellow. <laughs> and what I mean is I mean more of a yellow than an ochre when, when I use that term. Um, an ochre would be, it's still the yellow family, but it's not what I would consider a real strong yellow. It's more beautiful. I've just tried to get enough pigment down over this whole thing so I can go back, put the water in, and I can see as it moves over to the left, I, I, this is, I just took that ochre color and I put uh, bird sienna into it. And so we're going to take it and we're going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I got to get some color down here. So there's that. I mix, mix some yellow into the accident, get more of that. The more of that I can get, the better. There's so I took that is a mixture of burnt sienna and yellow Hansa, and that's what we end up with. Some darks down there. I don't mind if you get a little bit of bright color down in here. So I grab more ochre. And I grabbed more Naples yellow. I haven't been using much Naples yellow. I'm gonna push some pigment down here, right? Let's grab some Naples yellow and some yellow Hansa, and we'll try and get some, some real thick stuff going down in here. And I see it getting kind of green there too. It's kind of neat. Ooh. Let's let's bring a little bit of that. Um, ooh, see how this works. Trust me. I do. Oh, not bad, huh? I know you're looking at it, wondering what the hell I'm talking about, but uh, it feels good because I see that yellow going on, leaning more to the green, so that it's a, a good way to answer your question about yellows. Speaking to yellow, I see it leaning more, and then I see it darkening as it goes down, right down in here, and then I see a lot of red happen right in here. So trust yourself. Just put it in there. If it doesn't work, take it out. Got to get, got to get. Hopefully we can make that work at the end and it won't look like just a bunch of crummy paint strokes. I'm always hopeful. It's my, my optimistic side. 
coming out. I'm always hopeful that it's it's going to work. It's going to work. I know it's going to work. I just got to keep at it. It's going to work. And then every now and then you go, hell, it's not going to work. I got to give up. But so that defies your. You always say assume. But I also say that this is true for everybody. Uh, anybody that's a painter, you may not do. You will never do. I say, you'll never do a bad painting. Oh, write that one down, huh? Now let me finish that statement. You're just going to do a lot of unfinished paintings. A bad painting is a painting that hasn't been gone over and refined and finished. Any painting, I and I do believe it, any painting you can make work. Some are much more difficult. So let's go up in here. Same kind of thing. I'm going back to my Naples yellow light and I'm mixing it in with a bunch of those other colors. And we're going to go. See, I don't want to go quite that bright that fast. So I'm going to take and mix up a little darker version of that same color just right next to it. So I'm a little darker now. And we're going to go here, 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 here. Up, get the rhythm. A little, a little brighter. I've got to just try to cover everything so we can go back and refine because I can't refine until I get stuff covered. I don't want to refine. Otherwise, I'll have a finished part of a painting and the other part. So I'm keeping that concept of keeping this painting very free. So I'll go back to Naples and the and Yellow Hansa and I'm going to go brighter, thicker, hopefully. Move your paint around. Pretend like you know what you're doing. Okay, so we kind of got every, oh, got this little piece of light on that mountain back there. Let's kind of put that in there. It's right about, it may not work, but I'm gonna just assume that's gonna be right there. And then it goes over, okay? And then while I've got that color mixed up, why don't I just hit the top plane had a little too much blue, but the top plane of the Mesa. Okay. Now we might be able to add more in here if I if things go well, but right now I want to get that water in so we have everything laid in. And I'm about not quite an hour into it. Uh, I'm going to mix up kind of a, a, a dark blue, gray, this probably, I probably have too much color in that. Oh, I really don't. Um, so let's try that. That shocked me. Surprise yourself. Yeah, I surprised myself. <laughs> Didn't happen that often. Usually I try to not, I not spend too long adjusting the color. Um, Let's go. I have to bring this bank up higher, I can see, but that needs to be lighter anyway. Probably a little prettier, but you know what? I like pretty. So, I mean, the color's a little purer. I probably could have muted it out a little bit more, but it doesn't bother me a lot. It might when I'm done, but right now I can live with it. And it's getting a little lighter and a little bit more violet as it comes up to about there. And then it gets a little lighter still. So I'm going to add just add more white. A little bit trick there. Maybe a little bit more ultramarine, a little bit more white. And we'll try that. Oh, maybe a little more white, huh? What do you say? I'm looking at the erratic edge. I think that's very important. The top edge. 
The bottom edge is the foliage, is the, the bank of the river. But the top edge of the water creates the characters, and it's getting lighter. It's getting more of that sky color in there as it moves across. So I added more white. Disappear. And more white still, almost the, almost the color of the sky that I was using. Right about, because it's reflecting the sky, you gotta remember, there. I like that stroke, by the way, I just did. It's, it's, got, it's got some viscosity to it and uh, it creates the character that I want. And then it disappears. And then maybe we get a little sneak of the water back here. Then more white, more medium because it's not laying down what really I want. More white, I want the sky color this time. Exact same color I was using the sky with medium in it. So I, why? Because look at that wet paint I'm painting on. So what I want to do is I want to carve this area out right here. So it's, this is going to go up. The bank is going to come over here. It's going to go up. It's going to come over. And right about in here, we're going to get that little piece of waterway. There. And I, if I have to put that dark bank back in, I will. Because I, I put it in and wiped it out. And basically, it's just the sky color. It's pretty much what I used in the sky. And it goes over, and then it disappears. And maybe, maybe we'll we show it again. So we've created that. It's going to go back in space. And back in here, it almost goes to shadow again. So it's, it's going to go more into this kind of color. So it's about, it goes here, here, disappears, comes up, and right about there. Steve is saying, I want to see you do a golf course. Bernie Fuchs did some amazing paintings of the masters for Sports Illustrated. You don't need to add figures if you don't want to. Oh, I like adding figures. You know that, Steve. <laughs> I like figures. Figures are people. Done a few golf course paintings. I've done, I haven't done golf course paintings. I've done guys on the golf course, um, but I haven't done golf course. I, I always thought it would be fun to do. Nothing. But, I'll come out with you, Steve. I know you go golfing. So I'll come out with you one of these days <laughs> and you can be my model. Nice trim spelt looking guy. So we're gonna we're gonna go back into this uh, shadow area back here, a little deeper, because it isn't shut. But what I'm gonna do, it was just got a little piece of the river. I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna bring this river all the way over here. And then I'm gonna bring it back. Okay, so there's the river back there. And then we're gonna bring it over here. I almost begin to feel it sneaks its way. I don't know if it does. I'm recreating. So we're gonna bring it there. We're gonna bring it over here. We're gonna bring it here. And then a little, a little bit, gotta talk real high. A little bit back here. Behind those trees. Oh my God, there's the river as it goes off in the distance. Look at that. It almost works. Uh, we got that light in. So now let's take care of a little bit of this. Some of the stuff I don't like. The edge of the bank. So I need that umber, a little bit of blue so it doesn't just stay umber. And I want to kind of come down here and do things like that. I don't know what the hell I was thinking right here. I see something I can. Didn't want to pick up a brush, but I do want to get a little bit of the. Okay. Better. Bothering you? You always want. When you apply new stuff, you always want it to be better than what was there before. Okay, that goes back to the uh, finish to look better than the beginning, if you think about it. So 
I wasn't happy with with the way that edge was. Also, I noticed that as I move this way, I get a little bit more light just here and there. Denise was mentioning that she likes the pink texture. Who does? Denise. I like. Uh, it's the best part of the painting is the texture right now. I don't know about how. I don't know how the values are. Relating, there's areas I don't think are working. I can take a clean brush now and kind of push, push, do a little pushing so we blend a little bit more. So, all right. But let's stay with what I was thinking. <laughs> it's easy as hell, you guys, to get sidetracked. And you probably all find it too. I hope you do uh, as you're painting. And you all of a sudden go, wait, wait, I got to lay off that and get back to what I was doing. So I'm going to get back to creating. Oh, look at that little piece of water there. Oh, I like that. Didn't catch it before. Let's get it in there. Let's get the bank in. And that's this bank. And then it comes out. We have that bank. And if I screw up the water, I can always put it back in. Don't be afraid. Mess up and then recorrect. And sometimes that's the most exciting part of the painting. Little striations, little pieces of, and I, I'm, letting, I'm letting it mix in with that. Oh, what the hell am I doing back from? Uh, that's water. <laughs> and there's a little bank right there. And it's pretty dark on the back side of it right here. So I just darkened my, picked up more of that dark color. Okay. Now, that isn't standing out very well. It's because there's a, some shadows on the foliage that's right in front of it. Okay. And some of that gets really nice and warm. So I went over back, back to my warms over here and I'm picking up to add just moving some of that warmth back into this area. And back up in here, little pieces of elements that are catching things. Now, if I wanna take that and I do see it get a little dark right here, and then it goes over, I've created more water there and it disappears and it eventually is gonna connect over here. So we made it feel like it's it's going over there and it is going to connect. And we went a little bit on this bank, not very much because it's not real dark. And bring some of it back as we see it. There's a little area right there. My eyes, just so you guys are aware, my eyes are going all over the place. So as as soon as I get one little area laid in, I look at another area and I say, okay, now what do I need to do here? I, I just caught this. I don't like the way that's shaping up. That is a divot that comes off of here. So I probably can add just a touch of you know, the dark, warm dark, which kind of makes it relate to this. And as this goes up, I can probably bring it over a little bit further that way. That dark's a little too dark. I just noticed it when I looked at it. So knock it back. Now let's go in, let's hit the light on these trees, by the way, because there is some light at the top of the tree. So what color is it? It's in the green range. It's light, but it's not bright green. So it's very warm. Um, so I'm mixing green into my ochre colors and we're gonna go in and we're gonna start with that. You know, that's I'm not as far off. Man, I thought I was gonna be further off. Let's try it again. Yep. Looks good from here. Huh? Looks good from here. Uh, you guys notice that I've done 90% of my painting with this number 12 rosemary. That doesn't mean if I were doing a finished painting that I would do it all with that because I probably would switch down to smaller brushes as if I needed areas to be more particularized. But there's a wonderful spontaneity that happens uh, by using these large brushes, I think so. Um, someone else may feel completely different, but I have to love the 
the spontaneity that you get out of sometimes using a larger brush. Now over in here, those trees tend to feel warmer. So I'm gonna take same color, I just put more ochre into it. And we're gonna put a little bit of light on this tree. Probably a little too light too fast. It comes down into the shadow. And I'm gonna bring, put some orange into it now, cat orange. A little bit of light on this tree. Just a flavor of light. And the top of this tree, let's make it a little higher than the other tree. It's actually lower. Almost now if you ever do plein air and acrylic. Yeah, but not for a long time. Uh, do I ever? Not anymore. I have. In fact, when I started plein air, that's what I worked in. So what are the advantages of having? It dries faster. Um, I just, I tell you what, you guys, I might try. I haven't decided. I, I'm going to do a study first. Uh, uh, Jeff Olson, who is uh, the representative for Talons, Rembrandt, um, he, years ago, he gave me some um, water soluble oils and I tried them in Mexico and they worked out pretty nice. And I thought, I was talking to him last week. Actually, I did a podcast with him. Or I think a, we were on Zoom, so I don't know if it was a podcast. But um, he just sent me a set and I said, I'm going to play with these and I may do one of these Friday sessions with um, water soluble oils and see, you know, I'm, I'm willing to give it a shot. And if you guys are willing to, uh, watch me fail um, because that's I, I never know how they're going to come out I, I when you do them you just hope you know uh, but generally I've, I've done them and I've been relatively successful but I've never done them larger than I think the largest I ever did was a 9 by 12 so for me to do like an 18 by 24 hopefully would work okay but I thought what the heck maybe I'll give it a shot so I may uh, possibly next week or the week after. I, I don't know. I may do a water soluble oils demo. Um, not on a golf course either. <laughs> so a couple of questions here, or, or actually, uh, Denise was saying that she's really watching the direction of your brush. Which is, Good point. Yeah. Um, Change that a lot, Denise. Um, I try. Yeah, that's a that's a very good observation. I really try not to um, paint the same kind of stroke over and over. And some of that is brush direction. Some of that is you change the direction of your brush and you get, and, so, and it's a combination of changing the direction, changing the pressure, changing the load of paint. So, so if I pick up paint, look at that. If I pick up paint like that, can you guys see that? So, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna lay this down. Look at that, that's thick paint. Now, I don't want it that thick, so I'll just grab part of it and keep using it. Fun. Uh, and Linda Monahan. Hi, Linda. Um, hey, Linda. Wants to know. Linda, <laughs> we missed you. Yeah. What she, do you What do you mean by going too light too fast? Same thing as I mean by going too dark too fast. You do not want to take your two extremes, which are your lights and your darks, and pop them in there right at the beginning. Um, you always want to leave a little bit of room. It's a It's a safety valve, so to speak. A little bit of room. So if you need to go darker or lighter, you have that opportunity. That's what I mean. There's a ground. I was, all this was kind of a mess and this is, I want it to be a ground in shadow. So I just took a big old brush and made this the ground now. And then we're gonna make, so it's not just a big flat area. We have a little texture going on in there. Oh, you know, I mixed up a color a while ago and I didn't, the reason I did is I wanted to hit this edge. I got some super thick paint on here, you guys. I'm gonna grab a little medium. When, when I say medium, I'm either using, in that case, I use the solvent-free gel. But sometimes I, when I say medium, I grab the uh, safflower oil. If I want thicker paint, the solvent-free gel works better. If I want my paint to blend a little bit more, the, uh, 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 did I say linseed? Safflower oil works better. So now we've got that edge working, and there's a lot of texture. Jesus, I could just go nuts on this. 
uh, in here. So I grabbed some more orange and threw it back into the color I was just using. And we're just going to kind of, nope, going to throw more yellow into it. And so I'm just piling paint on paint right now, you guys. To me, if this is the fun stuff. This is the stuff you live for when you're when you when you're doing this kind of painting. You want it. You want that. Now you see how flat that is. I don't like that. That area right there. So let's kind of texture it up a little bit. Piling paint on paint. Piling paint on paint. Yes. When you start painting thick and I like to call them gooey, uh, when you get that way, what you're really doing is you're just piling paint on paint, and you're to a degree, you're crossing your fingers and it works. But um, I've done that plain air. And boy, I've really done some crappy paintings that way. But I've had a few that have really come out well. So I feel like to a degree, I'm getting a little better at that. Um, I know I did it in Italy two or three times last, uh, not, I was going to say last year, but it wasn't last year. <laughs> it was longer than that ago. Yeah. I know I was painting with uh, Bill Cohn and Bill Ray, both really great artists themselves. Uh, Bill Cohn was dealing with pastels and Bill Ray was just trying to harass me, I think. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we were all painting in one spot. We painted this little island, a little rock island in Sicily near Taramina. And uh, so I had just done a painting that morning and I thought, I had two, I was on my third. And I thought, hey, I'm gonna do a palette knife and just thick paint. And so I started this rock and it's one of my favorite location paintings that I did. It, things worked, you know, it's like, I wish I could tell you why. I think it might've been the great influence of the two other artists that were near me, but in any event, it worked. And I was just, I was really happy that I, it came out and it came out thicker than most paintings that I've done on location. But, you know, it's like, I went, I said to myself, uh, self? <laughs> now I said to myself, I think I could get really good at this if I did it all the time. I don't all the time, unfortunately. Right now, there were, I would love to be doing these things outdoors with you guys. It would just be so much better. But we can't get internet. And that's the reason we haven't done them outside. We can't get that internet. And so, and we want to do them live. I mean, I could always do them, uh, you know, and, uh, post them later, but the whole concept of what I was trying to do with this uh, live painting is to paint live so you guys can see. And that, if I screw up, you get to see me mess up. Uh, if I'm doing, if I'm doing a, a canned video, if I mess up, I can edit it out. If I mess up here, get to watch. And believe me, I have messed up. I just don't tell you what I do. Somebody, somebody posted, to me recently, do you ever do a bad painting? I said, hell yeah. I said, I just don't post them. No, but nobody sits down. No artist. I, you know, we haven't we haven't seen um, Sergeant's bad ones. I'm hoping he did them, but we haven't seen them. <laughs> um, you know, Soroya. We haven't seen Soroya's really his bombs again. I'm hoping he did. Now Zorn. I'll tell you something interesting. Andrew Zorn. Uh, we went to a. Um, Great exhibit, and a lot of you may have seen this wonderful Zorn exhibit when it came around uh, in San Francisco. And there was a painting in there that was under glass and it was all slashed and put back together. And what it was, it was really nice, it was a figure. It, and what it was, was he didn't like it and he slashed it and put it in a trash, someone found it. <laughs> so uh, I know artists now that burn theirs. <laughs> Because they don't want, you know, they don't want that to happen to them. But again, it was one he considered a bomb, and it was terrific. I was saying you sure leave a lot of paint on your blue napkin. <laughs> Do you use it later? <laughs> no, <laughs> these are shop towels. I have old T-shirts I use too. Uh, and one of the re I. You're, I'm cleaning my brush constantly. Maybe you guys have noticed, maybe you haven't, but uh, when I'm, a lot of times I'm just right, wiping off the re residue. I'm not cleaning it thoroughly. It's not like I'm going over, I'm just wiping off the extra thick paint, right? So that I can pick up fresh paint and put it down. 
And I'm mixing darks of different colors now, and I'm painting back over some of the lights. So I've got, I've got on that brush right now, I have um, burnt sienna and I have uh, burnt umber. And I'm just pushing it back in on top of that paint, piling paint on paint once again coming up with nice textures and interesting edges that somewhat depict the image that I'm looking at. I'm, not, I'm going for feeling, not exactness. I think that's, a, that's an important statement for uh, you guys to understand. I'm going for feeling, not exactness. And that was my intent. It was, this was not intended to be a super refined, it was really, when I started out, my whole goal was to be very, very, oh, uh, impressionistic with even with a lot of expression in it. So here's more dark. I'm going to use it most of the paint on my palette, I think. Umber and burnt sienna. Get a little paint smeared in there. Some zigzag strokes, some pulls, some pushes. And I'm looking and saying, what do I need? What do I feel I need in this area that isn't, I'm not, that I don't have now? Do I need anything? I see a dark, so more per number. So you're, you're using more than just the one number 12. You have other large Yeah, numbers. I have, but not, like I said, 90% of what I've done has been with this number 12. Just that one, not others. Yeah, I have a, an eight I've used and uh, what else? And a, and a filbert that I've used. Um, I'm going to get a little bit more character in this area. Let me look back in here. I haven't even looked back in here to see if I like this. Um, <laughs> I know one thing I wanted to do. I was thinking about this right at the beginning. Um, see, I've got these little orange hickeys up here. I'm going to get rid of those. Also, I have a lot of paint on my hand. Time for a new rag. It's my seventh rag. Oh my God, I've gone through seven. I never go through seven in a, in a demonstration like this. Um, I'm just using a lot of paint. It's fun. So I'm going to take some, some of the orange, cat red, orange hue, a little bit of white, so that it's kind of similar to that color. And I'm going to flicker in a little bit of it here and there where I feel it will work. So I'm over exaggerating, but I, I'm doing it based on feeling. And if I don't like it, I'll, I'll take it out. You ever, you ever hear me say that before? If I don't like it, I'll get rid of it. That's my motto in painting period. If I don't like it, get rid of it. So we're gonna put some clouds in. Just, I took the, this blue, I already had some other color. We're gonna put, I'll tell you why I wanted to do this. I kind of like, I like this piercing light coming through. And I think I want to exaggerate that even more. So we're going to stand back. Does it look? Yeah, it looks okay. I'm mixing it into this paint. So it's as I'm going over, it's lightning anyway. I, I do, I want to lose it as I get over in here. Go down here. Okay. All right. Now, why did I do that? I will show you. Little little thought process. Naples yellow light. And I've got to find a clean spot on my palette. Um, because I'm going to take that with pure white and I'm going to mix them together. So I have Naples yellow light and white. And then I'm going to take some of my solvent free gel, take a little bit more Naples yellow because I think I can get by with it. Mix it in with the white. Okay. Probably need more solvent free gel. It just doesn't, it feels sticky like it's not going to sit. And that's where you start to develop a feeling for the consistency of the paint. So what am I going to do?
little yellow sky coming through from behind the clouds. Do I like that? Yeah, I actually like that. That's good. Huh. So I'm gonna, I had the idea. Um, doesn't always work. You know, sometimes you, you have this idea and you attempt it and you go, well, oh, that didn't work. Okay, this is, if it didn't work, I would have told you and I would have just wiped it out. But I stood back for a second. I want it to fade as it goes over this way. So I use it to kind of clarify the hills just a little bit right in here. I'm let it kind of come in here and then it's going to fade. Now I'm going to take it all the way over. I wasn't going to initially, but I think I am. Okay, that kind of helped a little bit. So, well, I've got that color mixed up, right? We got that color mixed up. Keep an eye on the time here. Uh, I started a little late, so I'm probably gonna go a little long. I'm just at about what you call 90, but I know we started late, so I'm gonna go a little extra. Uh, probably more like uh, 80 minutes into it. So I, what I did is I took yellow and added yellow to that color. Now, Linda asked me the question about saving your lights. There you go. I have room now to paint brighter lights on that mass and add more dimension, more depth, more life to areas such as that. I don't like using, this is a little bit of a small brush, but since I've got this color on it, I don't wanna, it's like a number, it's a number eight. And I am looking at my reference to see the areas that I think are catching more light. It, it just, it adds depth and dimension to a flat shape. Before that shape was one tone. Now, and as I look at it, as I look at this compared to this, compared to this, a little darker, a little darker, a little lighter, a lot lighter. So that's what I've allowed myself to do is, is give myself uh, permission, so to speak, to come in and add those real brights that I needed. Sometimes I'm just touching the brush down and sometimes I'm pressing. If I just, I, I catch myself fussing too much by just pressing, doing the same, now push, pull. So we added a little bit of more liveliness to this area right back in here. It comes down and then it comes down on the ground. And I don't want to be quite as bright, but this comes down and creates that light. And that goes up onto that, that bush. And then we have a little bit more of that same kind of light affecting right here. Right back here. I'm just looking. Where else I see that? I'm trying to pile more paint on and make it like I don't like all that. That needs to be broken up a little bit. So I have it stood back as much as I normally would. And when I get back is when I make my judgments. What does it need? I'm making most of my judgments right on top of it. So sometimes it's not as accurate or as precise as I might want them if I were back further. Then I the reason you want to get back further is you want to see the entire painting. You don't want to just see the air. Like I can see this area right in here really well, but I can't see that area. I can't see that area unless I look down at that area and then I lose this area. When you stand back, you can see them all.
bigger pain. So I'm standing back. This area up in here still bothers me. It just needs a lot more layering. I can see, it just feels like it needs. The very top of these is where the light is hitting. But I don't want to just paint the top. I want to paint a little bit down below, a little bit more in here. A little bit in here. Touch or two in here. Right here I can see quite a bit going on. And a little color variation through some more, picked up some more orange. Can I see it? I feel it right. Oh, I feel it get darker. I'm going to take um, some burnt sienna and mix it in with that orange. And I'm going to let it, this kind of happen right in there. Can I see it dark? One of the fun things about painting wet into wet, you can, you can really create interesting uh, paint movements. By that, I mean the way that paint interacts with the paint that's already down there. So I'm planning, as I put this stuff in, I'm thinking about what color is already down there and how the paint that I'm going to put down is going to interact with the color I already have down there. I've got to stand back for one second so I can see how the water, I don't like the way that water in the background is just it's not there. That works pretty darn well. That I'm happy with. Um, that I want to get, I, it feels like it needs to be brighter. So I'm going to clean the brush I was just painting with. And for that, I'm going to clean it with a little bit of turp. Kind of pretty good on the bottom. I kind of scrubbed it and I got to get most of the turp out. And I'm going to go back to the sky color, that original sky color. Probably could use the yellow, but. I think this is going to be light enough, and I'm going to hit right there. Oh, it comes over that part of it. Oh, boy, nice gooey stroke, boy. A little goo, a little goo never hurt anybody. <laughs> now we're going to bring it back into the distance. There we go. Oh, I don't like it. It's not. It's going up and not over. I want to go in that way. So I put that in and I'll take this little, God, start to accumulate paint on all my brushes handles. Not a good thing. Lori Kersey would hate me. <laughs> she would be disappointed. Lori Kersey's the neatest painter I have ever seen. Although from what I hear, Matt Smith is pretty darn neat. Um, I would, I would, if there was a contest between the two of them painting and who would come out the cleanest, I would put my money on Lori. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And thankfully, her husband, Brian, is a swab like me. <laughs> so no offense, Brian. We're at about, uh, I think I got about five more minutes because I started a little late. I'm using that as an excuse. I just am noticing things. So as I notice textures, colors, I will introduce those hopefully into my painting. That's kind of jumbled and kind of a mess up in there. And it bothers me a little bit. It bothers me enough where I'm gonna fuss on it. Let's put it that way. Um, that, and that's kind of what I do when I paint. Uh, if something bothers me, then I go back and sometimes I don't even catch it till the next day. In fact, often I don't catch it till the next day. Um, and I'll go back and say, yeah, it kind of bugs me. Sometimes I, it's weird, I'll be having dinner and all of a sudden, I'll think about something I did in the painting that I didn't like. Maybe I didn't even notice it then, but for some reason, it stuck in my head. Um, 
And there you have the curse of the artist, right there. In, in other words, it's hard to always get away from your painting. I think that's why some artists go mad. Uh, thankfully, I haven't hit that threshold. I want those trees to go behind those trees. And I want a little bit more activity so I can see it in here. And I think I could take a little bit of a license, which is what I did here. And I can bring a, the bank of this river, just a tone back there. So I separate it from the trees. Now, you notice those little oranges that I put in. So I'm, I'm back to those, I'm looking at those now. And I'm saying, okay, what do I need to do? Well, that one's a little strong. So I'll take, I've got the mountain color. Just go over a little bit. A little of it sneaks through, fine. If it's if too much of it, like over here, I'm going to get rid of it a little bit. But look, I, I don't mind. Um, if you, the wonderful artist Edgar Payne uh, would have things like little dabs of feeling of that orange peeking through, and I don't know sometimes if he added that after or if he put that on and then came over it again. But it's one of those things that um, you can do. I, I tell you what, in fact, when I was a student, sometimes um, I would try and leave areas in a painting, some of my underpainting that I really liked. And uh, one of my teachers said, if, it, if you can't leave it and it's still there, put it back in as overpainting and then paint over it again. And I went, yeah, that works. So if you, if, you come up and you realize you want a little bit of that orange flicker sneaking through, put it back in there. And then if it stands out too much, paint a little over it and lose it again. So here's, here's that orange again. So it's kind of sneaking a little bit here and there. And I can, I can kind of feel a little more color happening in that realm and a little duller color happening here. So I just took more of my umbers and kind of dull that down a little bit. And we bring it up in here, you see some, just adding textures. You can see right here, I see a texture from the bottom. So that's umber. And if the texture stands out too much, get rid of it. And you read it, you keep reading, you keep backing off and you read the piece. Is the piece reading? Is it doing what I want it to do? Is it doing, and what you want to do may be based on what you see in front of you. Maybe it, it's that simple. It's like, I'm gonna, or a little, now being careful because I wanted that nice separation there. Now there's a lot more striations that I can see in there. So if I wanted to, I could go back and add those. You can add in, Another one here. And they can be coming from anywhere. They don't have to be, you can add them as opposed to just uh, copy 100% of what you see. So don't be afraid to add things. You know, after a while you begin to understand and as you understand, you, you will take more of what we would call artistic license and you will change things. Initially, I was afraid to change anything. I mean, if it was there, I wanted to paint it like it was there. Now, what the hell? I'll, I'll try a little, just about anything. And if I can make it work, great. If I can't make it work, so be it. A little bit more light. Oh, that's nice thick paint too. Nice thick paint on top of it. A little bit more light right in here. Just bare, I'm just piling that paint right on top. I'm not pushing it in. So I'm laying it down almost like I'm buttering warm bread. And we're just about there. I, I Truthfully, I could say this week after week and I probably do. I could paint on this for another day and just keep adjusting and adding texture.
but that's the area probably that bothers me the most in the whole painting. And it just needs more development. It just, I haven't spent the time. I lay, it's, a, it's an initial lay-in that I have not gone back and developed as, as much as I might want to. So I'm just kind of telling you what I might touch up when I, um, after I take a break, have a little lunch, touch some stuff up, and then we're gonna go get a Christmas tree. What do you say about that, huh? We'll put our masks on and go get a tree. Ooh, this, I like the, the paint and the paint quality Sorry. is happening. Really kind of, it's fun. Oh, it's even thicker than I thought now that I Oh, can it's really this. thick. You can, maybe you can come in at the very end and show them. Sure. Um, I'm gonna back off here. I got, hopefully I don't have paint on my, I put a hat on because my hair is so damn long it falls on my face. We're gonna cut it later. Um, my barber who's holding the uh, camera right now is gonna do the work. I'm going to I'll set my iced coffee and wish you all well and uh, happy painting. Okay. Thank you for yeah. tuning in. Closer in a little bit just to see some of that texture. Wowie. I'm going closer. You're going closer, um, Chuck? Well, I can't because this will make it go. <laughs> I need to drop the tripod down a little bit to be able to do that. Here. Okay. There you go. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a great afternoon. You too. Thanks again. Thank you.